Hey, good day everyone. My name is Timian Spencer. I am from the beautiful country of Guyana. Yes, the only English speaking country in South America. And I'm the last of six children. Yes, my parents made six children, three boys and three girls. Um, currently, I am still enrolled in the Caribbean Nazarene College as a student awaiting for graduation in May. But outside of that, I serve in Guyana as a district licensed minister, uh, particularly attached to my local church, the Queenston Church of the Nazarene currently. And um, I also serve as the Global Missions Coordinator for the Caribbean field in the Church of the Nazarene. Um, growing up as a child, all I can remember really is Sunday school. And that's a good thing. Uh, as children, our mother insisted, or as a matter of fact, our parents insisted that we head across the Sunday school. Whether we wanted to do it, whether we liked it or not, we know on Sundays we had to get across the Sunday school. And today, as I look back at that, I'm grateful because it was really Sunday school that really shaped a great part of me. As a matter of fact, at the tender age of five years old uh, was when I decided to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now, I know for some that may be an ex extremely young age, but God was really doing a work in my life. And it was so irresistible that I had to say yes to God. Um, after accepting Christ, I got involved in the church um, on a more uh, personal level. I was, I was doing youth evangelism. Every Sunday, I was with the elders. We were sharing tracts and, and uh, pamphlets and invitations and telling others about Christ. And that momentum in the Lord grew so much that at the age of 12, um, I decided that I was going to take it a step further and get baptized. It was at that point um, that was evident, at least um, to my family, to the church, and even to the wider community at large, um, that I had decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Uh, so the question was asked, when and where uh, did I receive the call to come to Bible college? Now, the truth is, you guys ready for this? That call really all started for me um, in 2017, in July of 2017, and it was on the mission field. Yes, I was involved in a call to serve mission trip to Jamaica. And it was on that particular trip that my now mentor, uh, Reverend Paul Bunsey, when we were having conversation, he shared, he said to me, you know, I sense that God is calling you to, to ministry. Now, at the time, I probably was a little bit unsure or probably even immature to understand that. Um, but it really started in 2017, even though it was 2018 when I really uh, surrendered to God and then started Bible school in 2019. 2017 was really the catalyst for all of that. Um, my, my time in Trinidad was very awesome. When I started CNC in 2019, I spent four years and I really enjoyed each and every minute and second of those four years. Um, whilst here or whilst in Trinidad, I served in the NY extensively, and um, I also had um, a, a good time serving alongside the NMI as well, even as part of the NYI, and then also as part of my role as Global Missions Coordinator. In the NYI, I served um, as the North Zone NY Vice President, um, and then as the B Evangelism Coordinator for the District NYI. Um, uh, there is when I really uh, had the opportunity to uh, serve alongside the District NMI, um, Lee Hope and all of those who, did a, who, who do an awesome job. Um, one of the most memorable times was definitely the, uh, the Bible Jeopardy Missions Edition. Um, it was just amazing being able to uh, work with Lee um, to see the successful pulling off of that event, being able to see the young people participate and learning about missions in what I would call a very creative um, and awesome way. Um, also, play and witness as well, uh, working alongside the District Global Missions Coordinator um, that, is a, that, that serves with the NMI, uh, the Andrew Joseph and 
um, being able to head to the Orpoon um, area and reaching the young people through sport um, and through play and sharing the gospel with them um, through a fun and exciting way. Those are just two events that for me were memorable during my time in Trinidad. And I really just want to say thanks to the District NMI as well um, for the opportunity to serve alongside you. Um, and I pray that God will continue to be with you even as you would serve. Um, the, the other question that was asked is what got me interested in missions um, and my global missions assignment? Well, as I shared with you, the, the call to ministry started in Jamaica as well as the interest for mission start in, in Jamaica. Before going to Jamaica, I had a misconception and misperception of missions. Um, and maybe, maybe many others had that mis misconception. I saw missions as a boring thing. You just go in the hot sun and you share out invitations and tracks. And so I stayed as far as I can from mission trips. But I, I thankfully God nudged me to go on that mission trip in Jamaica. And it was in that mission trip or on that mission trip that God really changed my mind and my heart for missions. We had a fantastic time. We were in what uh, was known to be the most dangerous neighborhood in Jamaica where nobody wanted to go just because of the crime rates. But after a week there, just to be able to see the impact of the gospel. Um, it was indeed a moment to stand up and boast that we definitely serve an indestructible God. So it was that that really got me passionate um, about missions. And um, fr from, from that moment, I was involved in a very active way. And God was doing what he was doing because I, I never really envisioned one day that I was going to be the Global Missions Coordinator. Um, but God saw my passion. He saw my um, my faithfulness, my vigor, just my interest in missions and mobilizing individuals and sharing with them about missions and wanting to come on mission trips. Um, that he saw that and he said, you know, maybe this is the right person or this is the person that I want to lead this ministry. And so that is what got me involved in Global Missions. Um, and I can say since I've been serving, it has been a fantastic time. Um, I've enjoyed every part of it, being able to visit different countries, train persons um, uh, in the CCO, um, connect with churches, lead mission teams. Last year, we had a fantastic time in St. Lucia. Uh, and so that is where it all, it all took place um, for me. As I shared earlier, my present assignment in Guyana um, remains as a district licensed uh, minister until I start pastoring, uh, which will be in the near future. But outside of that, I also serve um, on my district as evangelism coordinator as well. Um, and so I coordinate evangelism um, and all forms of outreaching initiatives aim that sharing the gospel and reaching the lost and uh, being able to share the love of Jesus Christ uh, with them. Um, as I kind of wrap up this this little video, um, I was I was asked this question. Um, why would I want to share or how important Shari uh, is it for the church to involve children and youth in missions? Now, I love this question because for me, I started missions as a youth. Um, and even as a child, being involved in evangelism, there were some missional components there as well. Um, I think it's important because uh, it helps first and foremost to build passion um, and to even uh, facilitate a call that a young person may have. But on a, another level as well, I think is important because the, the Word of God instructs us and it shows us all over the Bible that God would have used young men and women to accomplish His purpose, His will. Um, he would have used them to do things 
um, that would have been mighty in the word of God. And if you really look at some of those things, those assignments were missional in nature. Recently, I attended a, globe, uh, a regional conference in Panama called Max 2022. And the emphasis for the region moving forward, at least up until 2030, is children, youth, and the city. Um, and when asked or questioned why children, youth, uh, because they shared that, that, that the children and the youth are critical in today's society. And if it is that we don't involve them, then we're going we're gonna to lose them. And so I think it's critically important to involve children and youth. Um, I also want to kind of burst the bubble that children and young people may not be ready for missions. Missions is not a big people or old people thing. Um, it is something that God can use the smallest child, just as he used um, King Josh, and he can use any teenager just as he used um, Samuel and David and all of these other individuals. And so I encourage you, if you're watching this video, um, to start to encourage and involve children and youth in missions. Start to involve them um, in mission trips, in mission initiatives. Because who knows, they might very much have a similar experience like I did on the mission field that changed my life completely all around. So may God bless you, may God keep you, and thank you again um, for, for watching this video. God bless.